All right, I got my son Roan on the camera for this one because I'm going to be kind of working with a couple different spiders here and I want to be able to concentrate on what I'm doing and not try to hold the camera steady. So we're going to be doing a husbandry video on the Lazyodora parahibana. This is one of the species I recommend on the higher end of comp uh, uh, difficulty scale for beginners. It's a very popular beginner species and partially due to its supposed very large uh, maximum size. Now I want to start right off the bat um, explaining something about the size. There's a lot of talk about these guys getting nine or 10 inches, and I've honestly yet to see an individual that size. The largest specimen I've personally heard of was one where somebody posted a picture of a molt and the molt was the molt from the female was about eight inches or so. So that's, that's still a big spider, but the majority of these guys, if you talk to people get around seven inches, um, to a max of eight inches. So if you're buying one of these expecting a gigantic spider, you might be disappointed. If I'm being completely honest, the thing that attracted me to this species when I first got into the hobby was I was obsessed with the T. Sturmy, this big, massive 10, 12 inch um, spider. And I knew I didn't have the expertise to be able to deal with the husbandry requirements. And then I read about this um, LP or the salmon bird eater. And everybody talked about how it gets to be 10 inches. The husbandry is very simple, which it is. And so wanting a big spider and wanting one that was, you know, had relative, relatively easy husbandry, I picked up one of these guys. I now have four. Um, I picked up a couple more on my own, and then I get sent, uh, got sent one recently for a freebie. So um, we've got plenty of these guys around in my household. Um, I'm going to start off by feeding this one as I talk a little bit about it. Now, again, the husbandry for these guys is very, very simple. Um, there we go. Right off the bat, I'm going to drop another one in. They eat like they're eating machines. There's never a problem with them eating. Let me see if he'll grab this one or run away. Yep, there we go, gobbling them up. They're eating machines, they eat really well. The growth rate, although I've heard people say that the growth rate for them is very, very fast, I found them to be kind of medium-paced uh, growth rate uh, as far as spiders are concerned, the bigger ones. I keep um, Pampavidia species and several Formictopus species and they grow a lot faster. They pick up a lot more size between molts. They molt a lot more often. Now, Little crickets trying to get away. Don't get scared, bro. It won't get you. Um, so I found that, that those two genuses, uh, genera, actually grow a lot faster than the salmon bird eater. So if you're expecting to have, I've, I've read reports of people having spiders that are, you know, six, seven inches in a year. I, I don't see that. Again, I keep my temps here a little bit on the cooler side than some of the keepers. Um, in the summertime, it's anywhere. I'm going to close this up for a second. And we're going to feed this other one over here. In the summertime, we're talking about temperatures mid-70s to 80. And that's about it. Sometimes it gets a little bit higher, 82 or so. But that's usually about the temperatures. And in the wintertime, we're talking with this guy's position because there are warm sides of the room and cooler sides. We're talking uh, 68, 70 degrees during the um, nighttime and during the day, mid-70s. I do have a heater, so I do have the day-night um, variation in temperatures. But I don't really go crazy with it. Uh, there's been question of whether these are kept dry or uh, moist. Some people keep them moist. I happen to keep mine fairly dry. Every once in a while, I will make it rain in one end to give them a little moist spot, but they don't seem to care one way or another if the substrate is moist or dry. Um, the majority of the time, the substrate in the, um, my enclosures will be on the dry side. I do make sure they do have a full water bowl um, at all times. Um, this one here is on a combination of topsoil and peat, actually both of them a combination of topsoil peat with a little vermiculite thrown in. Same thing with this little guy we're going to feed here, see if we can draw him out. This guy might come bulging out of here, see if we can get two videos for the price of one. Um, enclosure wise, uh, Verona will back up for a second and just check out this one. This is one of the Lorax enclosures, back up a little bit more so you can see it all. I have from Lorax Plastics. I don't think I'd be buying these again. They're, they're nice, they look really nice. Um, they're not horrible cages, but again, I've already talked about having to already replace the wire vents on one of them because they can chew through them. This one's actually getting chewed up, and I've already got vents on order to replace these as well, as well as the ones for my uh, El Itabune. So um, they look very nice. They're, they're nice enclosure if you only have a couple spiders, but they're not stackable. They scratch easy. Um, they've been bending a little bit out of shape, and you will have to replace the wire vents if you put a big spider in. This one here is just a Sterilite Tupperware container. This uh, specimen here is about two and a half, uh, two and a half, two and three quarters inches. So this is a good size for it, and then later on it'll get a much bigger enclosure. They will burrow as slings. This is something you don't read about very often, and that caused me some stress. Let me keep that steady. 
caused me some stress when I first got my first sling. It buried itself, and sometimes they'll completely seal themselves off when they're in pre-molt. Um, I have another one over here that I've had for um, two years now that when I first got it would literally bury itself for a month. I'd never see it, and it caused me a lot of stress as a new, newer keeper to keeping slings because I thought the thing had died. But inevitably, the hole would open up. It would You'd see the legs. It would come out, grab a prey item, and it would be a little bit bigger. Um, this is a species that can be a little bit skittish. I've never had any problems with them being defensive. They are voracious, voracious eaters, so they have a good feeding response. So if you stick a paintbrush in there to, or a pair of tongs in there to clean something out, they will rush the tongs thinking it's food, but they're not vicious. Um, a new keeper probably would have no problem um, handling them. The biggest issue is you are going to have a fairly good sized spider at your hand at some point. I mean, seven inches, even if it only hits seven inches, is still a very big spider. So one thing that people might want to take into consideration if they're new in uh, into the hobby and haven't had much um, interaction with tarantulas is that this is a, a bigger spider that can have a bit of attitude. But overall, they're pretty nice. They stay right out in the open. Um, I have to admit that as I've gotten more into the hobby, I like LPs. I understand why people like LPs. They're a wonderful spider, but I've actually found some that are kind of comparable that are a little more, for lack of a better term, exciting. So like when I got into the Formictopus um, genus, I love those species because they have a little more personality. They grow a little bit faster. They're a little more spunky. However, for somebody new to the hobby, they might be a little bit of a handful. So these are still going to be me, and I think they rightfully remain a very popular beginner species. Um, a lot of people, it's one of those uh, spiders that they feel like their collection's not complete unless they have one. Um, unfortunately, I have four now, so um, I'm definitely covered in that area. But a good spider, a good beginner species on the more advanced level of beginner species, and one with very little um, husbandry requirements that just dry substrate, or if you want to moisten one side, moisten one side up, a water dish, and that's about it. Let them go. So this is the LP, L. Parahibana. I just want to see if I can get this little guy to eat in here. He's being very, very shy. I'll just drop this right in here. I normally don't do this because I don't like dropping food right in their homes, but we'll see if we can draw this guy out. Boom. Boom. He's got it, I think. This is pretty much like somebody dropping a hamburger on you when you're trying to sleep. I feel bad. But you did need to eat. All right. He's much on that one. This is the L. Paraibana. Again, decent beginner species. Very easy to keep. Um, medium growth rate and uh, very, very hardy.